अस्सलाम वालेकुम माय यूट्यूब फैमिली कैसे आप सब लोग हो आप सब खैरियत से होंगे अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह मैं अब्सोल्युटली फाइन चलो टुडे आई एम हियर इन आई एम अटी टू डिस्कस सम वेरी 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 अननोन एंड वेरी फेमस टॉपिक्स ऑफ इनफर्टिलिटी अबाउट इनफर्टिलिटी एंड अबाउट थायरॉयड अबाउट मेल इनफर्टिलिटी एंड ऑल्सो सम बेसिक इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट सैरोगेसी एंड एक्ट ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी एंड ऑल दैट and we are here with dr roya rosetti ma'am there is no need to introduction about her she is the famous and she is a humble person who i met her and we are here with her so we'll start some questions and answers so so assalam alaikum ma'am welcome to our channel assalam alaikum ma'am welcome back to my channel flavors of the kin ma'am shall we start some questions ma'am yes 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 ma'am without fallopian tube can we get pregnant ma'am no it's not because the physiology is such that when the ovulation happens the ovum will be picked up by the fimbria end of the fallopian tube and it comes to the mid segment of the tube and then when the patient got intercourse and meeting with her husband and yeah. then spermatozoa it comes and meet and fertilize the oocyte in the mid segment of the tube and it gives rise to the fertilized oocyte that is in the embryo embryo formation and the fertilization happen in the tube oh then the embryo will travel okay. from the tube into the uterine cavity Okay. And on the seventh day of the fertilization, it get implanted. Okay. So the whole process depends on the very healthy tube with the intact cilia, and the length of the tube is ten centimeter, consisting okay. of the interstitial and the ischial part. Then there is also a infundibular and fimbrial part of the tube, which is on the lateral part of the tube. Okay. So and what happens ma'am can we get pregnant without fallopian tubes it is only by in vitro fertilization okay where the uh, oocyte and the follicles should be prepared by the COS control ovarian stimulation by giving patient a chemical and FSH taking out the egg aspiration of the egg by the ultrasound guided under general anesthesia and okay. then this in vitro happens where the sperm of the husband will be inseminated to the oocyte in the test tube that's why the fork and the layman it call this procedure as a test tube why because the fertilization happen in the test tube and in the petri dish okay and mam we do exco when fallopian tubes are removed we remove it when the fallopian tube are damaged like it become a salpingitis or the hydrosalpin okay. and you pathologically get blocked and when we know that this type of a pathological tube can be harmful for our ivf procedure because then continuously these macrophages the immunological factor from the tube it comes to the uterine cavity and it kills the embryo Okay. During the procedure and the treatment by IVF. Okay, is it IVF uh, success without two tubes, ma'am? Yes, of course. We have very many many cases. Okay. You can see now more than ten thousand patients that have been delivered without the tube. Mashallah. Where they don't have tube. One tube has been removed in America. One okay. tube in India. And okay. then we do in vitro fertilization. We talk. We take out the oocyte. Oh. and we do the in vitro procedure and i do for icsi intracytoplasmic sperm injection and then 3 uh, days or 5 days culturing in the petri dish either in the egg cell embryo or in the blastocyst type or we transfer to the uterine cavity by the embryo transfer catheter okay and then we get very very good success for the 50% success Sometimes we don't tell patient that she is 
90% of yeah. all success. But we know from the, you know, the whole procedure that sometimes patient has a good endometrium, very good embryo, egg cell embryo, or Machine very good, good blastocyst. So we know this patient gets success. But we don't tell them. We tell all the patients 40 to 40, 40 to 50 yes. percent success. But that's why you're known for miracle doctor. So, ma'am, we'll go with the next question, ma'am. How long after both tubes were removed, can it start grow again, ma'am? After cannot, removing? The tube cannot be. Good. Cannot be, okay. Ma'am, can we get pregnant without fallopian tube, tied after 10 years, removed after 10 years? You mean to say we removed the fallopian tube? Okay, some lady asked me this question, so that's why I'm asking. Oh. About, more about fallopian tubes, ma'am. So, fallopian tube, the type of pathologies which we come across in the day-to-day -day practice, either with the infertility patient or the normal parents patient, it is an ectopic pregnancy. Okay. Where patients get pregnant inside the tube because of yeah. the background of the PID or salpingitis. Okay. Ectopic pregnancy, instead of she get conceived into the uterine cavity, okay. she gets pregnant inside the tube and okay. that is very dangerous. And how to make a diagnosis? Once she gets very much pain, okay. she get her complaint of pain and also a little bit of spotting and bleeding. Okay. The duty of the patient is immediately to report to the gynecologist. Okay. And then uh, if she already has done the urine test, then they have to do the ultrasound, transvaginal scanning, to see if the pregnancy it is inside the uterine cavity. And if the uterine cavity is empty, then the next step is to do the level of the beta CG in the blood. Okay. And if it is more than 1,000 international units, that is gold standard criteria, it is CG more than 1,000, and we do not see the gestational sac and pregnancy into the uterine cavity. It okay. means it is highly suspicious of tubal pregnancy. Again, the next management, the next step, it all depends on the patient's symptom. And if she continues to have pain, we have to repeat the beta CG in 48 hours time. And 48 hours time, if the beta ECG does not double, for instance, today the beta ECG has been 1200, and after two days, if the beta ECG is about 1500, then okay. this is another sign in in favor of ectopic pregnancy. Okay. And still, with the 1500 IU international unit of ECG, we do not see the pregnancy into the uterine uh, cavity. It means highly suspicious. And if she oh. keeps on complaining of pain, she may need to go for laparoscopy. Okay. With the beta ECG high, uterine cavity empty, and sometimes we see adimexal mass yes. on either side of the tube. We see a mass on the ultrasound, then we see free fluid, the blood is there present in and around the uterus. These are all signs of the uh, ectopic pregnancy and tubal pregnancy. Is it common thing, ma'am? Yeah, it's a rare thing. It's, it's, it's no, no, it's very common. Um, earlier on, a decade, uh, maybe about 10 years ago, the incidence would be 1 in 150 pregnancy. But sure. now the incidence has doubled and tripled. It's because of the PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, because of tuberculosis, uh, okay. because of all these factors in the society, uh, because of lifestyle has been changed. changed. Um, and there are, you know, there are other factors like basically multiple sexual partners where these are the type yes. of the things which is the young generation and um, basically they are following this type of a new lifestyle. So definitely there is a raised incidence of PID in particular in West but also in Asian countries also. Yeah, so the yeah, incidence of right. topic pregnancy has been increasing. Mm. There's due to the changes of lifestyle and changes of food, artificial food and all that, Nama? Main thing? Artificial food, because some, sometimes our youngsters, they stay without marriage together. I mean, we yeah. changing uh, the friends and... Uh, yes, different. yes, ma. Having a relationship without marriage, these are the outcome. Yeah. So... 
मैम फ्यू लास्ट क्वेश्चन मैम वॉट इज मेल मेल इनफर्टिलिटी मैम The 2010 criteria WHO World Health Organization has defined as male infertility and oligospermia. At the semen count, the concentration in it is less than 14.5 million and less than 24 to 30 percent fertility and less than 4 percent normal morphology. That okay. is called oligospermia. This is normal criteria we have to know. Even the patient, they should be aware. Okay. And or maybe it is in the form of sexual dysfunction that the male partner or husband will be impotent okay. and they cannot have a regular IC and relationship. And maybe there are some other type of a blockage will be there, the vas deferens obstruction or lack of the vas deferens, which is a congenital. Or infection, prostatitis, or there will be sometimes retrograde ejaculation, ejaculatory duct obstruction, and uh, sometimes there are uh, signs of the hypospadiasis. And as I said, these are all coming under category of the other things of the male. Yes. Okay. How is the diagnosis, ma'am? Uh, normally, we refer the patient to the urologist and andrologist for the examination of the. Genital tract of the husband, but if only he has got a problem with the low count, we treat ourselves. And if there is a problem with the oligospermia or oligoastenospermia, motility is less or the count is less, we do three to four times intrauterine insemination or UI. The success rate is 15 to 20 percent per cycle, and if the count is less than five million. With the motility less than 10 percent, or sometimes azoospermia, then these are the candidates and the patient where we need to put them for ICSI, intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Okay, it will be treated, ma'am. Yes, it fixes. So we can fix the problem. The only problem which we are facing, which is no answer, is patients with the. Azoospermia, non-obstructive azoospermia. When we get, we get a patient with a nil count, that is zero sperm. Okay. So what happens? Our duty is to post the patient and prepare the patient for testicular biopsy. Testicular biopsy, if it shows that there are spermatozoa in the testicles, this is called obstructive azoospermia. Okay. So we can get a success. We can do ICSI, and we have many patients in our series. Last year we have done more than thousand, and we have Mashallah. excellent success because ICSI is the one of the excellent technique and the most advanced, best technology which is now there for the men with azoospermia. Very perilously uh, earlier, they had no hope to become a father of their own offspring. But yeah. now there is a great hope with the excellent success, Mashallah. with the 50 percent success rate. But if the testicular biopsy it shows there are no spermatozoa, okay, there are no spermatozoa inside testicle, so it is the success rate of ICSI is very less, okay. and we don't want patient to waste their time. And normally they will opt, they will go for the donor sperm or the semen bag. Okay. Is this haram or halal, ma'am? No, in Donors? our religion is haram. Okay. And I don't do. It. Oh, yeah. I know, ma'am, you don't do haram things. And mashallah, we have wonderful session with you, ma'am. Thank you so much uh, for ca clarifying our doubts, ma'am. And hope you have uh, briefly explained everything. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair for watching, ma'am. First.